fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! Oh, Silver! Away! Sheriff Gideon West was the law in Bancroft. That was one of the reasons the silver mining boomtown was famous. Everyone knew and respected the tall, somber, crag-faced man whose name meant law and order. True, there were those who hated him. Hated him because he was fearless and fair. That was the reason Gideon West now picked his way through the crowd, moving along the town's main street. He was headed for the Three Dice Cafe to give an unwanted stranger some wise advice. Evening, Sheriff. Evening. Had a fine day, didn't we? Yes, we did. How are you, Mr. West? Fine, thank you. Hi, sir. Hi, Yancey. Hi, Gideon. Hello, Sam. Say, there's a new tin horn in town. Did you know it? Maybe. Saw him this afternoon inside the three dice here. Says he's going to start dealing a faro table. Yeah? What does he look like? Oh, about your size here. Yeah. Dressed as kind of slick like. Wears a diamond ring on one hand that's big as that. Happen to know the gent's name? Mm, let me see. Hey, I think he called himself Baxter. Old Baxter. Baxter, huh? I figured he might be the one. You know? No, can't say I do. But I know the man Baxter works for. Well, if he's a gambler, he's working for himself, ain't he? Maybe. That's what I aim to find out right now. Come on. Good evening, Baxter. Yeah, put your money off the top. Get in west. Mr. Sheriff. Hi, Sheriff. You move around a lot, Baxter. I didn't expect to see you in this part of the territory. It's a free country. When'd you leave Texas? That's my business. I deal Pharaoh wherever I You please. also have a sideline, Baxter. That's my business. Yeah. Still working as lookout for the Tracy gang? Listen, no small town bad is gonna tell Answer me. my question. I haven't broken any laws. 
I don't have to answer any questions. In that case, I think you'd better pack your card dealing outfit and move. You can't move make... out of town, Baxter. Now. Well, Watch you... out, Sam. I'm watching. Did you see that? The gambler went for his gun and Gideon nailed him right through the hand. My hand, you... Carry your cards in the other hand, Baxter. Get out of here. If you're not out of town in ten minutes, I'll jail you. All right, Batch Tootie. It's your gun in your town, so I'll leave. Good. Handy with a smoke pole, ain't you? When you've got a cold drop. That's my business. Yeah. Maybe some of Cal Tracy's gun hawks are just as handy. If Tracy and his men are in this county, they'd better move out, and you move with them. I'll tell him. There's one kid who'll be glad to hear a threat from you. He's got a good memory and a bad name. I'm not interested in the pedigree of a gunslinger. This kid remembers his pa who was a lawman in Texas about uh, ten years ago. His name is Dude. Ever hear of him? Dude. Adios, Sheriff. Hey, who was that hombre talking about, Sheriff? Hey, I don't know. Cal Tracy must have taken on a new gun hawk called Dude. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you can handle him, Gideon. Well, nobody in Bancroft's going to worry about Tracy or any other outlaw as long as you're sheriff. Well, I hope they're right. What do you mean? Where are you going, Gideon? Back to my office. I've got some thinking to do. Thoughts that were crowding the mind of Gideon West didn't wait until he reached his office. Most of them were memories of ten years ago when Gideon had been the sheriff of a cattle town in West Texas. He remembered one night in particular when someone had pounded frantically on the door of his home. Wait a minute, I'm coming. Hey, what's wrong? You better come over at the cafe, Sheriff. There's trouble brewing. Yeah, what's the matter? That fancy dressing kid of yours is throwing his weight around. Some of the boys don't like it, even if dude is your son. Oh, thanks for telling me. I'll go right over. Gideon remembered how anxious he'd been that night. Anxious to prevent a headstrong and motherless son from making a fool of himself. Dude wasn't really bad. His father would swear to that. He was just young and a little wild. The boy was too handy with his lips and his guns. Older men resented a kid who always wore a shiny black shirt and whose pants were never out of press. Even if he was the sheriff's son. Gideon recalled how he'd reached the cafe that night just in time to hear Dude arguing with Jim Salter. All right, Salter. If you're so all fired fast with those guns, reach for them. I came in here to get a drink, not to play games with a baby. <laughs> Especially when the baby can beat you to the draw. Why, you... <laughs> See? I've got you covered. You're still fumbling like a blind pig. <laughs> I could move faster than that in the dark. Let's see you try it, dude. No, 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 wait a minute. It's getting him, the sheriff. You ought to rawhide that smart talking kitties. Hello, Pa. Put that gun away, dude. Oh, I was just showing some of these old moss backs. I, I said, could... let's see that lightning draw of yours, kid. In the dark. <laughs> right. Somebody shut out the lamp. Now, you sniveling little. Dude. Pa, bring I... in a lantern. Light that lamp. Get, get that lamp over there. Come on, bring it in here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, maybe we can... Look at Jim Salter. He's been shot. Salter's dead. Well, Sheriff, what do you think of that? Murder, that's what it is. Dude shot him in cold blood. I did not. I I shot, but not in that direction. That won't help. I saw you do it. Listen, Baxter. No gambler can now, say wait that a I... Minute. Sh I was standing right here. Same as all these other men. I didn't kill Salter, Pa. Honest, I didn't. We'll decide that later, dude. Well, later... Can young fancy pants here get away with murder just because he happens to be your son? I didn't say that, Baxter. Dude will get a fair trial. Same as anyone else. Why do you need a trial when a man's killed in front of 50 witnesses? You're the only one I've heard swear they saw a dude do it. That's right. Maybe some of these gents are afraid to talk because dude's your kid. I say, let's string him up. Oh, right. no. no, there'll be no lynching here. 
Dude's my prisoner, and I'm taking him to jail. If he's guilty of killing Jim Salter, a jury will find it out. I didn't do it, Pa. Keep quiet, dude. Any of you gents think the sheriff's going to jail his own kid, you're loco. If he gets out of here, he'll turn him loose. Look out, Pa. Back of you. Drop that gun, Sheriff. I've got you covered. You can't drop it. You ain't very smart for a lawman, Sheriff. The kind of law we believe in is short and simple. Baxter here saw dude gun Jim Salter, so we're stringing the kid up. You'd better not interfere. No. That's what you think. Oh, hey, look right hey, through my hand. Now, you bunch of lynch crazy lobos. I've got the drop on all of you. Dude, you you can't. too, Pa. You were going to let him get away with it. Let him lynch me for a killing I didn't do. No, dude. I, I guess I'm the best one to take care of me. From now on, I'm doing it. Dude, please I'll don't. I'll drill the first one of you that goes for a gun. There's a frame up. The sheriff and dude frame it so he can get away. It's no frame up. Just for your information, gents, from now on, I'm making my own play. Dealing my own cards. That was the last time Gideon West had seen his son. He resigned his job as sheriff in the Texas town and came west. As the years went by, he heard indirectly that Dude had joined a gang of outlaws. But he'd never confirmed that report. Now, tonight, from the lips of the same tin horn gambler who had accused his son of murder ten years before, came word that Dude was with Cal Tracy's gang. Gideon knew that if Tracy was near Bancroft, he was probably holed up in the hill country west of town. Without hesitation, Gideon made up his mind. He stopped at the livery stable, saddled his horse, and headed west. A one man posse in search of an outlaw son. Come on, boy. Get up there. In the wooded hills west of Bancroft, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dad reined up their horses and prepared to make camp. This looks like a good place to spend the night, steady big fella. There's a creek at the bottom of the slope. Ah, uh, and there are plenty good wood to make fire. Uh, gee, I've never seen so many tall green trees growing so close together. They're birch trees, Dan, a few aspen. You take the horses down to the creek. Tonto and I, we got a fire started. Sure. Come on, Silver. Scout. Easy, Victor. Go. Dan, keep eyes open all time. I'm good. Yes, Tonto. One of Dan's best traits. His questions and observations prove that he's anxious to learn, which is a sure sign he will learn. Ah. I'll scoop out a fire base here. You gather the wood. Uh, you gather... gather anything but a handful of air. Reach. Tonto, I... You too, dude. Back of us. I recognize the black shirt and white hat dude, even from the back. You know I can shoot as fast as you can. So don't try anything. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. With Sheriff Gideon West's drawn guns at their back, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stood with hands raised, waiting for his next command. Uh, just so you won't get any wild ideas, dude, reach into those holsters with two fingers and drop your guns in the ground. I don't know who you are, but you've made a mistake. Smooth talking won't help you, dude. Guess I ought to recognize my own son. I'd know that shirt and hat you're wearing any place. If you think I'm your son, why don't you let me turn around? And you can see for yourself. I don't want to argue with you, dude. But I can't trust you. Pick those guns out of the holsters and drop them on the ground. Do what I say Put or... Put them up. You're covered. What, sir? All right. Now, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to drop your gun. I have you covered. Why, Why you're not, dude. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Did I fool him? Good work, Dan. Uh, you fooled me, all right. You think I fell for that old trick? Well, uh, you're not an outlaw. Why did you sneak up here? No, I'm no outlaw, but I guess you are. You wouldn't be wearing that mask. It might mean the same thing as that star on your vest. Sheriff. What? Now that we've settled that, I'll holster these guns. Tell me about it, Sheriff. About what? You thought I was your son. Yeah, I did. I haven't seen Dude for over ten years. 
Figured he'd be about your size and build. A dude and outlaw? Well, I just heard tonight that he might be running with Cal Tracy's gang. Tracy's holed up around here somewhere. Then you're out to arrest your own son. I want to save him, Viking. Otto and Dan and I may be able to help you, Sheriff. If you'll explain what it's all about. I don't know why I should trust an hombre that wears a mask, but... There's something about your voice. Well, my name's Gideon West. This whole thing started over in Texas about ten years ago. As the old sheriff told the Lone Ranger about the incident that had caused Dude to hit the outlaw trail, the masked man motioned to Tonto and Dan to bring up the horses. They knew then that they were going to ride instead of camping for the night. And that's about all there is to it. I haven't seen Dude since that night. Do you think it was he who shot the man in the cafe? No, I don't. Never have figured it that way. Dude said he didn't do it. And I've always believed him. I see. The boy never lied to me. Even when he was a little tyke. What do you know about this Hope Baxter? Just a driftling gambler. I'm sure he's a lookout for the Tracy gang, but I can't prove it. And the Tracy? What does he look like? Oh, small hombre. Got a crooked nose. Have you ever tried to arrest him? I've been after that owl hoot for years, ever since I've been a lawman. He's always managed to get away from me. Now he's got my boy. Sheriff, I think we can bring Tracy out in the open. I think when it comes to a showdown, that boy of yours will prove to be all right. What do you mean? How will we do it? Well, the first thing for you to do is go back to Bancroft, get sick, and die. Die? Have you gone, loco? It might take us weeks to find Tracy's hideout. This way, you'll come to us. What way? I'll explain what I mean later. Then we'll bring you word from me. All right, now it's important that none of us are seen in this vicinity. Steady, Silver. He's a big fella. But uh, I don't understand. You will, Sheriff. Just ride back to town and wait till you hear from me. Come on, Silver. Get him out, Scout. Come on, Victor. I've got to die to catch an outlaw like Tracy. Hmm. That critter's not only a mask, he's crazy. The following morning, when Dan Reed came to his house and explained the Lone Ranger's plan, Gideon West changed his mind. Within an hour, the report of his illness was known all over Bancroft. What's that you're saying, Bill? Gideon West has got pneumonia. Real bad, according to Doc Hawkins. Pneumonia, eh? That's liable to go pretty hard with a man Gideon's age. Sure it is. I hear somebody say the sheriff was sick. I thought Gideon ran you out of town, Baxter. I've got as much right in Bancroft as he has. It's a good thing for you. He's flat on his back. Yeah. I'm sure sorry to hear it. Awful sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The next few days went by, the reports on Gideon West's health became steadily worse. Finally, on the afternoon of the third day, a young boy who rode a white colt he called Victor... Oh, Victor, oh, boy, oh. ...reined up in front of the Three Dice Cafe, dismounted and hurried inside. What you doing in here, son? This ain't no place for a young one like you. I know it. But Dr. Hawkins told me to come up here and tell some of you men the news. News? Here. The doctor wrote it out on a piece of paper. Yeah, let me see. Well, I'll be... Hey, what's wrong? Listen, everybody. I got some important and sad news to tell you. Well, what is it? This kid here just brought me a note from Doc Hawkins. Gideon West is dead. Oh, hey, did I hear right? You mean the old moss back Gideon is finally cashed in? The funeral will be tomorrow afternoon. Well, I'm sorry to hear it. Mighty sorry. Yeah, you look sorry. I bet you'll have your pharaoh lay out and move back into town before the funeral's over. I'd get it with me right now. But it won't start dealing till tonight, boys. Why? You scared of Gideon even when he's dead? Nah. I've got some business to take care of this afternoon. I'll see you later, boys. That no good sidewinder. Say, where's that kid that brought me the note? Oh, he must have ducked out. It's funny I didn't see him leave. Dan Reed had returned to the home of Gideon West. But Hope Baxter, the gambler, rode several miles into the hills before he reached a small and well-hidden cabin. Oh, oh you kidding. It's Baxter. Baxter. Well, you don't have to yell, Baxter. 
Yeah. You spotted ever since you reached the camp. Yeah, but Tracy... I, I said no yelling. I remember that. Yeah, right. Hello, dude. Hi. Red. Hi. Pete and Muddy. Hi, Banks. All right. What is it? The break you've been waiting for. Yeah? There's no more law in Bancroft. Cracking that bank would be a cinch. Yeah, uh, you're loco. Gideon West has been gunning for me for 20 years. That's the break. Gideon West is dead. No. Dead? Dead this afternoon. Pneumonia. Well, I'll be uh, a... Are you sure? He's dead, all right. They're having a funeral tomorrow afternoon. I thought after that's over, we could... Over? Oh, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Dude, that double-crossing old man of yours has handed us all the gold in the drover's bank. Yeah, I guess he has. We won't wait till that funeral's over. It's made to order for us. Every man and gun in the town of Bancroft will be at the lawman's funeral. And right then, boys, is when we ride herd on the drover's bank. Yeah, that's right. What's the matter, dude? This will be your first job with us. Yeah, I know. Maybe the kid's crying about that sneaking sheriff boy here. Shut up, you. Now, boys, boys. <laughs> no scrapping on the home ground. That was just... You keep your mouth shut, see? What's the matter with him? Oh, he'll be all right. Guess you upset the dude a little bit. Yeah, kind of <laughs> touchy, ain't he? Now, look, boys. This is what we'll do. Tomorrow afternoon, just when they're planting old Gideon, everybody in town will be out at Boot Hill. And we'll ride straight to the bank. May I talk to you for a minute? What the? I'll get you. Don't reach for your gun, dude. I haven't got one. Who are you? How'd you get up here? How'd you know my name? I brought you a message. What is it? Here. What's that? It's your pa's sheriff's badge. I saw him yesterday. He asked me to find you if I could. Why would pa... I guess your pa got kind of lonesome for you, dude. He wanted you to have the thing he prized the highest in the whole world. I was going to go back and see him lots of times, but... Well... He told me all about it. You see, dude, your pa found out a long time ago that it wasn't really you who killed that man in Texas... Another man confessed the murder. But your pa couldn't tell you about it because you never came home. Yeah, that's right. Now it's too late. Oh, no, it isn't. You can still do what he wanted you to do. You mean this badge? Yeah. I think I understand, kid. You'll do it? Yeah. I'll do what pa would have done in my own way. Thanks. I bet he'd like to know that. I've sure been a crazy galoot all these years. But now... I'll it's... see you later, dude. Hey, hey, kid, where you going? He's gone. I guess I'm too ornery to pray. Pa couldn't hear me anyhow. But I can do just what he would have done and wear his lawman's badge while I'm doing it. following afternoon, almost everyone in Bancroft gathered at the little wooden church and waited for Gideon West's funeral service to begin. There were too many people to crowd into the house, so they waited outside with heads bowed. It wasn't long until the funeral procession started down Bancroft's main street and headed towards Boot Hill. Then it happened. Several men rode up to the drover's bank and started shooting. Tracy's gang had everything the road way because there wasn't a man in Bancroft carrying a gun. Just keep quiet, nobody will get hurt. All me and the boys want is a dinero in that bank. It's Cal Tracy. Steady Robbing boy. the bank on the day we're burying poor old Gideon. Shut up, you two. All right, boys, go in there and clean it out. All right, Tracy. Might as well just stand here quiet, folks. There's nothing any of you can do. Keep him covered, dude. No, Tracy. It's you I'm going to keep covered. Have you gone loco, dude? I'm just getting smart. See? A lawman's badge. You mean to I say I just that... got it yesterday. I guess I came home too late to see, Pa. But not too late to do his job, like he'd have wanted me to. Reach, Tracy. Oh, you dirty double... Red, Pete! Come here! It's dude, he's turned lawman on us! Oh! You're wrong, Tracy. 
I'm just through what Paul would have done. Hey, son, let him have it. Hey, Pa, I thought you were... Sure, I'm not dead. Never felt better in my life. Keep shooting, dude. We'll soon have them all. But I, I can't understand why... I can do it, and it's the proudest day I've ever known. It ain't every man who can capture a gang of outlaws and welcome home his son on the same day. Feeling better, dude? Sure, Pa. I'll be all right. There's nobody in Tracy's outfit that's a good enough shot to really hit anyone. It's just a scratch. They're all in jail, son. Every one of them. I still can't figure it out. I thought you'd die. That was just a trick. So Tracy'd come into town and start something. You knew I was with him? Sure. But how'd you know I'd take over your badge? I didn't know it for sure, dude. I just hoped you would. You see, I wasn't the only one betting on you, dude. Who else? The best friend you and I'll ever have. The Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>